Hi, this is Harmony from Messengers of Mercy. Thank you so much for listening to this devotional today. Please like our videos, subscribe, and keep listening for more God-glorifying content, devotionals, prayers, and more. So today we're going to be looking at Revelation 20, 11 to 15 from the Amplified Version of the Bible. This is the section labeled the final judgment. And I saw a great white throne and him who was seated upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. For this heaven and earth are passing away. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as written in the books. That is, everything done well on earth. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades, the realm of the dead, surrendered the dead who were in them. And they were judged and sentenced, every one according to their deeds. Then death and Hades, the realm of the dead, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire, the eternal separation from God. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. If you're familiar with Christianity at all, you've probably heard the term of a born again Christian. And oftentimes people don't like to use that terminology because it can be in a sense off-putting. But what it's truly referring to is touched on in this passage. There is a first life and that is the life here on earth. And at the end of your first life, you have death. Um, this is the death that we know of. This is the death that we're familiar with. Perhaps we've had a friend, a family member, even a grandparent who's passed away, whose funeral we've attended. And that would be an earthly death. But there is a second death that there is a talk about here in this passage labeled the final judgment. The same way that there's a second life. So when someone dies here on earth, their soul continues to live. And depending on if they've made right with Jesus, you know, saying, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I ask for repentance of my sins and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. If they've made that pledge with Jesus and they've continued to walk a righteous life, then they would go to heaven. But in this case, we're going to talk about the alternative. If they haven't made a covenant with Jesus, what happens? Well, you could see right here, this is the second death, the lake of fire, the eternal separation from God. So what is hell really like? Hell is torturous. It is the worst imaginable place in existence because it is an absence of our creator. It is an eternal separation from God. It is a place with no goodness, no light, no humility, no love. It is a place of immeasurable torment and torture. When you start to read biblical accounts of what hell is like, it talks about hell being physical torture. It's horrifying. It's dark. There's no light. It's a land of the deepest night and utter darkness and disorder. There's, it's the blackest of dark because there's no light at all. There's, there's no light of Christ. There's no love. There's the gnashing of teeth that's written about in the Gospels. It's um, specifically in Matthew, it says the weeping and gnashing of teeth. The thing is, hell is a place, it's in a burning fire. It's a, a burning furnace with fire, it's eternal. Basically, it's torture that never ends. It's a fire that never goes out people are weeping and gnashing their teeth because they want so desperately to die, but because 
this is their soul, your soul never dies. It's eternal damnation, eternal torture. I don't know about you, but if you've ever received a burn before, regardless of how bad it was, it hurts. And immediately what you do is you maybe you run it underwater, depending on how bad the burn is, and there's relief. The thing is, in hell, there's no relief for your pain. It's pain that's unending. You'll want for death and it will not come. That is how it describes hell. Hell is an unquenchable fire. The prophet Isaiah prophesied about a place of unquenchable fire. And that is then referred to again throughout the New Testament. It refers to hell as fire of hell, blazing furnace, eternal fire, unquenchable fire, tormented with fire and brimstone. It continues on and on. So this place is a place of torture, darkness, fire, eternal separation from God. So you're shut out from the presence of the Lord. You're shut out from his glory, his might, his love. And it's just an eternal place of eternal suffering. So when you start to think about what hell is, hell is a place that nobody ever wants to go. It's a terrible place full of physical sort um, and horrifying pain. It's pain that's unending. There's actually um, a verse in the gospel that talks about how bad hell is and just the means in which you're meant to go to in this life to avoid going to hell. So there's a, a verse, and I'm terrible with exacts, but to paraphrase, it basically says that if your hand causes you to stumble, so if something like your hand is causing you to sin, you're better off to cut it off and go through this life maimed than to die with both hands intact, but to die a sinful life that would mean that you'd go to hell. And that may sound extreme. I mean, I can't imagine ever cutting my hand off, but that's exactly what we're being told to do. We're being told to physically maim ourselves if we needed to, to stay out of a sinful life that would eventually in turn lead us to go down a path that would mean that you know maybe we would sin and we would not be able to um, kind of get over ourselves to ask God for forgiveness and then we end up in hell and hell is just a place that's so bad that we're being called to physically maim ourselves here to avoid it it's a place of eternal separation from God and that's the thing that the crux in which I probably get most hung up on because the fire part, I guess that's the story tales and, and that's kind of what I expect. But the eternal separation from God, when you think about what God is, I mean, at his core, God is good, God is love, God is light. So a place of eternal separation from God would be dark, it would be pain, it would be no love. And unfortunately, going back to what we said, it's eternal. Hell is unending torture. So if you know someone that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ into their life and you want to save them from that torture, or perhaps you're listening to this and you haven't made that step, it's never too late. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner and just ask Jesus for forgiveness of those sins. Ask him into your life as your Lord and Savior and know that there is never a sin so bad that he cannot or will not forgive you if you are truly repentant of that sin. So ask him into your life as Lord and Savior and you will feel 
yourself being transformed by the goodness of Jesus as the Holy Spirit awakens in your soul. I truly wish that you have an awesomely blessed day. And please keep listening to these messages from Messengers of Mercy.